only bill ever. That bill provides for three exemptions, internet horse racing, fantasy sports, and that which is licensed and regulated by a state, provided the state provides strong consumer protections to keep underage access, geolocation so that the activity happens only in the state. Fast forward to today, we have three states that have engaged in this activity. We have Nevada, New Jersey, and Delaware that have taken their games online, casino and poker games online. We have about a half dozen other states that offer online lotteries. Numerous states that have fantasy sports. I don't think anybody who watched any football this year didn't listen to the radio or turn on the TV and not get bombarded with fantasy sports advertising. Uh, and, and over 30 states that offer interstate horse racing. Um, what Sheldon Adelson is seeking to do, and what their coalition is seeking to do, and what Jason Chaffetz has introduced a bill to do in Congress, would be to shut down what these states have already done and tell every other state that you can't move forward. We're working in California, we're working in Pennsylvania, we're working in Illinois, we're working in New York. We want to work in all 50 states to have the states make the decision whether they want to authorize this activity or not. So we have a very uh, interesting debate here where you have um, the will of the states to, to do something, you have an outside political influence like Sheldon Adelson, and, and let, me, let me stop by saying, Sheld I'm a Republican, I, I'm assuming most of the people in this room are Republicans, Sheldon Adelson has done a lot of great things for Republican causes and for the Republican Party. Unfortunately, this is not one of them. He wants to push the Republican Party in a direction that would be counter to everything the party stands for. And so we need to stop that. We need to make sure that we have uh, the freedom of the states to make these decisions. Uh, I've got a little breaking news today. Next week, there's going to be a hearing on this bill that Sheldon Adelson is pushing, that Jason Chaffetz has introduced, H.R. 707. It's going to be in the Judiciary Committee. Uh, it's going to be important that members of that Judiciary Committee, the Crime Subcommittee, know that there is another side to this story, that this isn't about evil online gambling trying to corrupt our children, but this is about the rights of states trying to control an activity. Let me give you an example how internet gaming can be controlled and regulated. In the three states today that authorize online gaming uh, for over a year now, not a single instance, not a single instance of a child getting access of an underage person establishing an account and wagering online, not a single instance. You know, the mere image of that is Sheldon Adelson has a casino in Pennsylvania, the Sands in Bethlehem, that just last year was fined $300,000 for minors coming into his casino. The controls for online are so tight to ensure player safety, to ensure that uh, problem gamblers aren't, uh, aren't exploited, to ensure that some of the crazy things that our opponents claim, that terrorists are gonna finance all of their money through an internet poker site. The notion that a terrorist would come to a licensed and regulated site where every single dollar is traceable and try to launder money through that is laughable. It's laughable, but it doesn't stop them from saying it. They have ads. They run these slick ads on television that's, or on, on, online that say, you know, uh, you know, terrorists are gonna, going to do this, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's to, it's a seat from under line. There is not a single example of that happening in the U.S. where it's been licensed and regulated, not a single example of that happening in the U.K. and Europe where it's been regulated for a decade. So we have one side that's willing to say anything that they want and hope that people will believe it, and we have us who are standing here wanting to debate the issue, but they don't show up. So we're at a crossroads. I mean, we've got um, states who are really looking to do this from a, a revenue perspective, from a consumer protect protections perspective. And um, we have um, some in Congress who believe that, you know what, let's, let's strip the states of this, of this right. Um, we obviously fall on the other side of that and we want to engage the people here at CPAC to believe in that. We've created um, a website specifically for people at CPAC uh, to learn more about the issue. It's at thepPA.org/ CPAC, thepPA.org slash CPAC. If you look in the CPAC booklet, this ad appears in there. It also appears today and tomorrow in the Washington Times. Uh, it's an ad that, that talks about, you know, that the, uh, how crony capitalism is trying to corrupt uh, a basic conservative tenets of, 
of the free of, of the Tenth Amendment, um, internet freedom, and also personal freedom. Um, you know, I think there is a, um, uh, uh, and, I, and I don't know if everybody in this room is going to agree with our position, and I think there is a knee-jerk reaction for some to say, well, God, if it's on the internet and it's just accessible by anybody, you can, you can do it, and, and people are going to, you know, one of their, fa one of their famous uh, lines that they like to throw around is a click a mouse, lose your, your house. Uh, it's very catchy, but again, there is no evidence to support that. In fact, the evidence is to quite the contrary. People who play online poker or play online games are playing for such small stakes, stakes that aren't available to them in a brick and mortar casino. I, I was a very avid online poker player. I never played more than a $2 sit and go, which is a $2 tournament. You can't go into any casino in the country and find a $2 tournament. So this notion that the online game, simply because it's online, is gonna make it a more, um, uh, a more addictive or more destructive activity is not true. It's just to say the same is that, you know, just because something is, and, and poker and other games are legal and, and, and ubiquitous in 48 states, simply by taking it online, are we gonna then make it illegal? It'd be like saying that I can buy shoes uh, at a Payless shoe store in 50 states, but if Payless shoe store wants to have an online site for me to buy my shoes, they would make that illegal. It, it, seems, it's, it seems absurd, it's counter to what many believe to be um, you know, one, of the, one of the growing industries in the US, which is the internet. Uh, and, and, and it's actually interesting because we have Sheldon Adelson and Sands Corp on one side of this, and then we basically have the rest of the gaming community on the other side of this. Uh, there is, the, at one point, um, you know, the AGA and other gaming companies viewed the internet as a threat. You know what? Blockbuster viewed the internet as a threat. A lot of newspapers viewed the internet as a threat. A lot of businesses, bookstores viewed the internet as a threat. They didn't embrace it, and they got, now they're in the dust pe uh, dust of, uh, dustbin of history. Gaming companies don't want to do that. They recognize the opportunity. It is the major gaming companies that are operating in New Jersey. It is the major gaming companies that are operating in Nevada. They are the ones who have partnerships in California. They're the ones who want to enter the market in Pennsylvania. So the gaming industry has embraced this. They recognize this as a way to meet, uh, meet the consumer outside of the home and bring them into the casino. It's not going to be a destructive uh, um, activity uh, for their brick and mortar investment, but actually something that enhances their brick and mortar investment. Um, some would argue that the reason that, that Mr. Adelson has taken a different position is that he doesn't have a dance partner. He doesn't have the uh, savvy internet company uh, in which to operate with. It, it, but it, it's odd because Sheldon Adelson was on the leading edge of internet gaming in the early 2000s. In fact, he went to Alderney. Uh, a, a nation that licensed and regulates internet gaming, and he sought a license in Alderney to create an online gaming site. Here we are 10 years later, and he wants to ban the whole thing. It, it, it reeks of, uh, of, of someone who's being anti-competitive rather than really caring about uh, the social ills that he claims gambling, internet gambling particularly, will bring on America. Um, I, I am not aware of anyone who is protected by a prohibition. Uh, no child is protected under a prohibition. No problem gambler is protected under a prohibition. No adult consumer who wants to play poker on a legitimate site is protected by a prohibition. Prohibition throughout history has been a bad thing for consumers, a bad thing for, uh, for, for people who want to uh, participate in activity. And it doesn't mean people are gonna stop. This isn't about stopping internet gambling. This is about stopping states from authorizing internet gambling. Offshore companies will continue to operate here in the US. They'll continue to take players. The only thing that they won't be able to do is provide the consumer protections to those players. They won't be able to provide tax revenue to the states. Uh, and, and, and we're all gonna be left holding the bag. Uh, it's unfortunate that banning internet gaming has somehow been associated with something that Republicans believe in. I don't believe that to be the case. We have a number of Republicans who oppose this. Uh, obviously a number of conservative groups who oppose it. I, I can list 17, 18, 25 groups over the last three months who have voiced their 
their uh, opposition to an internet gaming ban to Congress um, through letter, through phone calls, through whatever it is. There are numbers out there. You know, you have people on the other side, like Joe Barton from Texas, a Christian conservative who believes that people should have the freedom to play poker on the internet. He wants to establish a bill that allows states to do it more freely so that states can do it with each other, so it's not on an intrastate basis. We support that. We think there should be that freedom. Um, but this notion that, for some reason, Republicans oppose internet gambling, I think has really only arisen because we have a major Republican donor who has decided that this is a priority for him. And when a major Republican donor decides that something's a priority, interestingly enough, uh, Republicans in Congress decide that this is a priority. Um, that's why this is getting a hearing next week. I mean, the Judiciary Committee, tort reform, immigration reform, um, uh, 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 a number of issues that, the, that that committee, weighty issues that have so much relevance to the entire country, they're, they're not talking about any of that. They're going to talk about how do we ban states from offering internet gambling? How do we tell New Jersey and Delaware and Nevada, who have successful programs in place, sorry, tear those down. That 20 million in revenue you got last year in New Jersey, sorry, I won't see any more of that. California, oh, you want to do internet poker? Sorry, you can't do that. And the industry, the gaming industry, what does it say to them? You know what? We're going to let everybody else offer their product on the internet. Anybody can go buy anything on the internet, but no gaming, sorry. You have to stay where you are. You cannot innovate. You cannot grow. Um, that is all anti-Republican. And the idea that Republicans are behind it is, 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 I think, because they're either confused on the issue or they recognize that uh, campaign contributions from Sheldon Adelson are more important than up, uh, upholding the conservative tenets and the, the Republican tenets that they claim to uh, stand for. Um, I can drone on for a long time, and I am disappointed that I don't have a counterweight here to give you the other side of the story, but I'm sure some of you might be thinking some things, might have some ideas on your own, some concerns. I want you to raise them to me, but let me just finish by saying that, you know, what we hope to do here at CPAC is, you know, we hope that you guys will tell Congress that Congress, you guys need to land this plane before it crashes. Let's not make Republicans be the party that is anti-Tenth Amendment, anti-internet freedom, and anti-personal freedom. Pushing this bill and having Republicans push this bill in Congress uh, would say exactly that. Not only that, it would be a clear gift to a major political donor. And crony capitalism is something that every Republican and everyone in this room should really abhor. So I'm hopeful that uh, we can continue to engage with you. We have a booth. We're actually hosting a party tonight. If you guys don't know about our party, it's at the Gaylord, uh, here at the Gaylord at the Pose Ultra Lounge from 7 to 9. Uh, bar, food, drinks. We're going to have some poker tables set up. Uh, we've got some professional poker players that are going to be there. Uh, we also have a photo booth where people can pose with whatever they believe their priorities are for, for uh, the 114th Congress. And I certainly hope nobody goes in the booth with a sign that says, ban internet poker because I can't imagine that that's anybody's priority in this room or anybody at this conference. Um, Dan, you had a question. Yeah, um, so I'm the executive director of Americans for the Green Global Energy Green Movement, CPAC. Um, and we're really excited to have you here to talk about the Green Global Energy Green Movement. Um, when it comes to climate change, CPAC, we're in favor of air brokers.
Well, no. Sure. Well, I mean, we, we first would say that that governmental interest when it comes to gaming should be left to the states. Gaming has always been traditionally regulated by the states. There is no federal gambling laws except for, um, except for that which is, would cross state lines. Um, and, and all of those laws were aimed at stopping the mob from, from using sports books and other things to, uh, to corrupt local government, uh, the revenues from that. So w when it comes to gaming, the traditional authority is the states. So uh, what, what the question here for conservatives is whether you like gambling or oppose gambling, do you believe it's the role of the federal government to uh, usurp the Tenth Amendment right of a state to say we want it or we will prohibit it? I'm not telling the states that they all have to legalize it. Utah has no legal gambling. They're one of only two states that has no legal gambling. I don't expect Utah legislature to pass a bill that says we're gonna have internet poker and internet gambling. But also I respect that if Nevada wants to have it and Arizona wants to have it and Colorado wants to have it, that it won't infringe on the rights of those in Utah. Um, so. It is really for conservatives, whether you are for gambling or against gambling or ambivalent, this notion of the federal government coming in and telling states what they can and can't do within their own border, particularly on an issue that has always been reserved and, and authorized and, and regulated by the states. Sure. Well, so that, that's, that's the problem right now is that with, the, with internet gaming specifically, uh, unless you're in one of the three states that have authorized it, anybody in America can gamble on the internet. You just have to have a high-speed internet connection and a checking account, and you, me, anybody in this room can, can start playing on a site that's based overseas with no consumer protection and no revenue for the state or for, or for the federal government. So your question about... You know, it is um, 48 of the 50 states today have some form of gambling, whether it be a lottery, whether the only two states that don't are Utah and Hawaii. Um, so gambling is, is somewhat ubiquitous in the U.S. For, for better or for worse, it, it is what it is. Internet gambling is ubiquitous in all 50 states, uh, but it's only licensed and regulated in three. Um, so what we would argue is that in order to preserve, to ensure that the consumer protections are in place, uh, that we need the other states to come on board and do this themselves. And if they don't want to, then they, then they don't have to. Then they can figure out a way to try to ban it within their state. Um, but but um, from a consumer protection standpoint, I think we're all better served to ensure that the sites that are operating in the U.S. are, are held to a standard, are making sure that they're not uh, letting minors onto the site, to make sure that they're not... Um, uh, preying on people that may have gambling addiction. Gambling addiction in the U.S. is about 3% of Americans. So it's, it's a small, sounds like a small percent, but it's a very serious thing and something we take very seriously. Um, and we don't believe that a problem gambler is, is uh, well served in a prohibitionary environment where they have no, uh, where they're essentially going to be able to still play. They'll, they'll be able to still access an online gambling site but they'll be able to do, they'll do so with a site that has no standards to ensure that they are not exceeding their, their means. Uh, in the licensed and regulated states today, there's been no incident, there's this parade of horribles of bankruptcies and, and minors and addiction skyrocketing. We have not seen that. In Europe, where this has been regulated for more than a decade, that is not the case. In fact, uh, gambling and problem gambling has remained rather static throughout Europe uh, be, and, and internet gaming has been 
prevalent there for more than a decade. So the internet game does not add to more gambling. Uh, it's certainly another outlet where people can, can play poker and play other games online. And, um, but it's not a... Well, that, that's, a, that's the beautiful thing about, about the online game, um, is that you can set limits, right? I can say uh, to the site, I only want to spend um, uh, $100 a month playing online poker or an online slot machine. And once I reach that, that threshold, not only am I not allowed to play on that site any, anymore, not only am I allowed to deposit more money on that site, I'm not allowed to deposit on any of the other state licensed sites because I've created that self-exclusion. That's something that they had in New Jersey and Delaware and Nevada to help people control their spending. There's also very common deposit limits. No, you know, no site is going to just allow someone to deposit $10,000 onto a site because for them, they need to know who their customer is. They want to make sure that this is a real person and they want to go through all the ID checks with that person to make sure that they aren't, uh, uh, they aren't putting money on there for any nefarious purposes. That's what the sites do. They want to make sure that they're operating and that they know every single customer. And not only do they know every single customer, and, and this may sound scary to people, this is a big government thing, but it's not. It's just, it's a standard in the industry that every single hand, every single wager is tracked. They know Every time that you're online playing, they know every game that you've played, they know every winning hand you've had, every losing hand you had. That is not true in the brick and mortar environment. I can walk into any casino with $1,000 in my pocket, sit down at the blackjack table, lose 500, go to the craps table, lose 250, go in the poker room, lose another 250, walk out three hours later, nobody knows I was there, nobody knows what games I played, nobody knows how much money I lost. That is impossible online. Online, everything is known by the regulators. It's known by the site. That information is shared. You can identify people who are problem gamblers. You can provide them help and treatment. Well, I think there's a, uh, there, there is a balance, right? We want to ensure that we have a safe society and that people don't abuse their freedoms, right? And, and, and I think that's just, you know, just like we wouldn't want people drinking and driving, right? Um, you know, people are allowed, adults are allowed to drink, but you don't, don't get in your car after you've been drinking. Uh, and I think that's the same thing with internet gaming. There has to be some sort of threshold to ensure that people don't get in over their heads. And I agree with that. I mean, we're not here to, to push gambling on people to say, you got to do this, it's great, and lose your money. No, this is about people wanting to use their recreational dollars to gain. And whether they want to do that at home or whether they want to do that at a casino, simply because it's moved to the internet shouldn't make the activity illegal. It's, very, it's, it's perfectly legal for me to sit in my home with eight people and play poker around the kitchen table. Now, if I want to move that to the computer table, now it's illegal? That seems very odd, uh, and it seems like uh, something that 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 we would want we would want to encourage it to be done in a safe and regulated environment rather than in a legal environment where it's still accessible but with no protections. Right, so yeah, zero if HR 707 <laughs> becomes law. Um, and, and to be clear, there's more than just three states. Three states have online poker and casino games. Another half dozen more have online lotteries. Those two would be forced to shut down. Those states include uh, Michigan, Illinois, Georgia. Uh, I can't think of them all off the top of my head. I can provide you a list. So there's about, about eight states, eight to nine states, that actually have something that would be impacted by, by, by this law. Uh, right now, as I mentioned, we're working on in states, uh, California, Pennsylvania. Uh, in fact, yesterday, just yesterday, Pennsylvania introduced a bill. Republican lawmakers in Pennsylvania introduced a bill to license and regulate Internet gaming. Um, uh, New York. Um, so there's about a handful of states that are on the precipice right now of it. This is, you know, it's, I, I, if, if I could tell you the exact number, I, I, you know, I'd be... I'd, I wouldn't be standing here. I'd be making money somewhere else because it's, that, is, that is the million-dollar question, is that it's, it's how do you, you know, lawmakers and, and this issue has become so convoluted now, and now with, the, obviously, the insertion of Sheldon Adelson and his 
his big money on this debate on the other side is making things more difficult in the states as well because they're investing money to stop the states from doing this as well. Uh, not only do they want a, you know, a federal law, but you know, they're also investing money in California and Pennsylvania and elsewhere. So. Um, I have spoken to Congressman Barton. Um, he obviously, there are, I don't know who he has lined up as co-sponsors yet, and I don't want to reveal anything that he, you know, that he's working on, but I know that he's working on legislation. He's introduced legislation in previous Congresses. Uh, quite frankly, the Poker Players Alliance has been so focused on state issues that we haven't really given the proper attention to a proactive federal bill. Right now, we're playing defense at the federal level, uh, but we'd like to be able to to be more proactive in supporting Mr. Barton's bill. Um, and I don't, at risk of embarrassing him, um, we have in our, in our, in our presence uh, one of the winningest online players, uh, poker players, uh, whom was playing here in the U.S. for a number of years and is forced now because of the draconian laws uh, to move overseas to continue to make his living Playing, uh, playing online poker. Uh, Andy Lichtenberger back there. Um, I he not only is he a, uh, an online pro, but a but a live but a live pro who's made uh, a nice living, a uh, very comfortable living, uh, playing poker, a game of skill on the internet uh, and in live. So uh, uh, thank you, Andy, for being here. Um, the um, I'm open to answer any more questions and, and ask me some tough questions because you know. I really was hoping to have uh, some tough questions here, and, and I feel like this is, this is too easy. Certainly, there, there is economic, um, uh, uh, economic uh, creation through this, um, and it's different kind of jobs. In, in a casino, you're going to have dealers, and you're going to have cocktail waitresses, and you'll have some people you know, working behind the scenes. With an online site, you'll have fewer employees, but they'll be higher paid, higher tech jobs, people that are working on internet security, people that'll be working on game security, people that are software developers, um, people who they would have call centers. Uh, certainly if you know, players are playing online, they had an issue, they would have a call center or, or, or an email, someone that they could email to have a, 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 a problem addressed. In, in New Jersey, um, there are requirements that the servers are located within the state and within uh, the casinos. Uh, there's requirements that headquarters and jobs are established there. I can't tell you the number of jobs that have been created in New Jersey, but it's north of 100. Uh, and I, uh, but I can tell you that revenue for the state in New Jersey has been 20 million in its first year. 20 million may not seem like a lot of money, but 20 million pays for a lot of things in a state like New Jersey, and 20 million in its first year. There are still people in New Jersey who don't realize that they can play online poker. Um, so we believe that those numbers will continue to go up. In a state like California, they're projecting in their first year, once they're up and running, somewhere north of $100 million in, in state revenue. So it's, uh, uh, there is definitely a revenue creation and a positive economic impact. And the drain on brick and mortar ca casinos, it's not there. They, the brick and mortar casinos recognize this as a complementary offering. Um, there's a way that you can use the online game to bring people into your brick and mortar casino. I'm sure anyone who's played in the casino knows that you get a rewards card. And the more you play, the more rewards and comps you get. Those same rewards would work online, that if you're playing uh, in the comfort of your own home, you would build up rewards where you would get comps at hotel rooms, you would get comps at the buffet, and it encourages people not only to play at home, but also to come into the casino and enjoy the experience there. The beauty about playing at home is you can play for one penny and two penny. I can sit and play a one penny, two penny poker game online. There's no casino in America, in the world, that would bother offering a one penny, two penny game. So uh, it is, a, it is a, a, a cheaper option for Americans to be able to learn the games, play the games, and then go to the casinos. And I think the casinos recognize that. Like I said, they don't want to be Blockbuster. <laughs> they don't want to be Barnes & Noble or Borders or any of these people that have gone out of business, that they recognize that they need to embrace uh, the internet age, they need to embrace um, uh, uh, providing their services to people through various platforms, and the internet is the obvious one.
Yeah. Well, I mean, what we say right here is today it's online gambling. What will it be tomorrow? You know, that, that, that's really for those of you in this room who may, may not be online poker players, may not be online gamblers, but care about the free internet. If the federal government's able to come in today and say, you know what, we're going to wipe this out, we're going to ban it, what are they going to do next? What other activities online are they going to prescribe to be something that they don't want? And it's particularly offensive because states are already properly licensing it and regulating it, making sure that consumers are safe. So online gaming today, what is it tomorrow? Well, certainly. I mean, the one thing about online poker sites, and particularly in the internet world, they're called very sticky, meaning that people go to those websites and they stay there for a long time. So it's a great uh, advertising option for, for people that are trying to sell products, uh, obviously poker-related products or other products that people who are playing online games may like. So certainly it's an option for them. You know, the gentleman over there asked a question about economic um, uh, um, uh, stimulation through this. It's not just the money that is derived from the actual operators uh, and, and what they create, but there's also all sorts of ancillary businesses that are built around iGaming. Um, there are uh, news organizations that are dedicated to it, advertisers that reap money from it. Um, there are all sorts of, uh, uh, of, of ancillary businesses that uh, are created through a regulated market. Um, and, and so there is additional benefit uh, that is kind of, you know, trickle down, if you will, from, uh, from a regulated marketplace. Well, uh, one more question. Well, thank you, and thank you, everyone, for who attended. Um, please come to our booth. We're at booth 605. Uh, we've got a, a petition if people are interested in supporting the cause. We're, we encourage people to sign a petition to Congress. And also, don't forget, tonight, 7 p.m. at the Pose Ultra Lounge, we're going to have a great party there, and everybody's invited.